Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to be talking about tape and how it applies to modern electronic music production and mixing and mastering. Um, so conventionally, tape is used uh, seemingly, or there's like the, uh, the notion that I have and that a lot of people have that tape is used for conventional recording. So like acoustic drums, uh, guitar, it's used in studios. You hear stories about bands just paying tons of money for tape, being like, we don't care how much it costs, we want to record to tape because we like the way it sounds, blah, blah, blah. Um, and that's all well and good. And tape is just one of those, uh, it's not magical, it's it's well understood, but it's, it's one of those things that uh, tape is not just you know, one thing. It's multiple things. It has a, it deals with higher frequencies, um, different than lower frequencies. There's a thing called the tape bump, which adds more bass to your low end, which is why it applies to electronic music. Um, there's saturation of the input, the output. There's, you know, tape widths. There's different speeds, tape type, different biases, uh, head noise, all things like this. There's a little bit of compression with tape too. And that's why compression sound, or that's why tape uh, tends to sound pretty good, does stuff to transients. Tape is just one of those crazy things. And I made a video talking about how tape is like, it's like the holy grail of uh, hardware emulation. Tape is very tricky, um, as, as far as I know, to get it to sound right. Um, and it can react wildly different depending on what you feed into it. As far as I know, I've never used tape. I'm not an analog guy, but I do appreciate um you know, what uh, people have accomplished here. So how we, we know how tape is great for, you know, acoustic drums and guitar and like taking your master and just putting some tape emulation on it to kind of smooth everything out and give it a little bit of low end, take, up, take off a little bit of the high end, things like that. And, uh, you know, a little bit of compression as well. And that's why it sounds pleasing to people. And that's why you know, bands, when they record, they'll just spend hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars on tape and an extra engineer to, you know, maintain the tape head and stuff like that. Who knows? But let's talk about how it uh, is applicable to dance music. And the reason why it's applicable to dance music is because it has this awesome low end bump that it does. And it's just the nature of tape. And it, it depends on the speed and the bias and the settings that you have, but we're gonna be using the uh, virtual tape machines. So what the virtual tape machines is, it's a um, an emulation of tape. You can see the tape here, reel to reel, et cetera, et cetera. It's based off of, I guess, two machines that I can't begin to name. Again, not an analog guy, but I do appreciate them. Two different tape types, or machine types, two different kinds of tape. Um, and uh, two different kinds of speed, and then normal, low, and high bias. And they, th all these things combined adds to a sound. So I'm going to explain what I have here. I have uh, two sounds here, two uh, loops, and they are basically the same volume, the same everything. They both have an instance of FabFilter Pro-Q, and in this window, both of the uh, frequency spectrums are overlapped. And that's basically what it looks like. So we're going to turn on the tape machine on the one track here above, and we will see the difference. Uh, first one is, is there's a little bit of noise. Noise is pleasing for some reason because um, you can't necessarily hear it. But when you add compression and EQ post tape, and then that tape is then, you know, converted to tape again, or transferred to tape again, come back in, that noise accumulates. All these things accumulate into um, the sound that is pleasing, and it's a, a culmination of a bunch of things. But um, there is the noise, and that adds something to the high end. And you can see it's kind of dipped here. Let's look at it like so. Actually, let's not do that. Uh, so yeah, it is now on, and let's look at the low end. A little bit of a bump there. Let's uh, look into settings, and I'll show you what's going on. So the bass alignment. So this is the uh, 
the uh, the tonal alignment of the tape machine. It can be adjusted, and it's always uh, default set to plus three dB. And we have uh, noise reduction here. We can just kind of have the noise reduction down, or we can keep it, or we can have uh, hiss automate to kind of take it away when we're not um, actually playing the audio. But it comes back when we do. So there is that. When you drive tape, it tends to compress. And compression sounds pretty good. It also does other things, uh, depending on the tape speed. Uh, I've done videos about this in, in the past. Uh, faster, tape, faster tape speed means um, that the, uh, the higher frequency content is more preserved. Lower speed means that it gets rolled off. It's the nature of the medium sliding across the tape head. There's less detail that's able to get in there. So there you have it. So a, uh, a lower speed will kind of roll off the high end frequencies, making it sound more warm, right? And that's why people like tape is because it sounds warm or analog, whatever you want to call it. So let's increase the input. We don't want to redline, but we want to kind of get into that saturation area of goodness. We lose a little bit of uh, the low end um, detail. So think of this input as feeding the compressor. It's basically what it's doing. Um, the tape uh, generally has a limit to the amplitude that it can handle. Uh, so it starts to, um, like, I guess, attenuate or compress those um, peaks and things like that. And this has a really good effect. You want to use effects subtly. Like less is more. Because if you have this tape machine uh, plug in and then you have some compression and then some EQ afterwards or before or whatever, everything combined really adds to a sound. And in my opinion, for electronic music, the low end bump that these uh, tape machines supply uh, makes your it makes your tracks just sound um, more, very, very, way more gooder. I don't know. I can't <laughs> think of the right the right term here. All right, so there's a little bit more aggression there, and that's just with like 2.4 dB of uh, input um, adjustment there. Uh, we can give it a little bit more clarity uh, by giving the tape more speed. All right, so that low end bump right there is uh, really, really bringing it home and all that. Um, different machine types, think of them as the frequency response of what you're, uh, what you're putting in there and the, uh, the amplitude. Uh, they both have the same kind of tape bump, but there's a different frequency response, so check this out. Right, so the, the two inch tape has a more high end clarity than the half inch tape uh, because it is a wider tape machine. I don't know. Um, I've never looked at these things before in real life. Uh, I'm sure there's some white pages on this, but yeah, that's basically it. So you get a darker track with half inch tape and a brighter track with a two inch tape. Tape type. Um, these are, I guess, um, what the, the, main, the, the tape is made out of, the materials. Um, uh, I remember back in the day there were like super high quality cassette tapes that used like a different metal oxide in them that uh, you could get more clarity in them. Um, similar thing here, actually. And uh, each tape will react differently to the amount of input that you drive into them, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so the general rule of thumb, um, open up your settings, get your bass line into three, 
uh, Wow and Flutter. You know what? This sound, this this is basically warble, um, and this adds to the sound. Uh, so you can have this. You don't need to have this. It uh, it's subtle. It adds to it, and you basically just increase the input um, to where it kind of lives around this red area. If you want those rich harmonics, um, but you don't want the red light to come on, uh, but you can for certain leads and stuff like that. But you lose uh, a lot of bass information, then you just end up like increasing the bass drum, and it's just it's not a good not a good time. You can also hide the, the tape stuff if you want, and uh, things like that. <laughs> And it, uh, it adds a lot to your drum and bass buses. So there you have it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. A little bit of food for thought. Um, hope you learned stuff. Take care and have a good one. <laughs>